Good morning. Turn around, kind of walk backwards here. Danny Designs here, D Squared, thank you for watching. Today is a Monday, August 5th. I'm gonna check to make sure, but it is a Monday, August 5th, definitely now. And uh, what I'm gonna do today, what I've been doing, is milling lumber. I need a whole bunch of uh, two by eights, right around 12 feet long. So I was, you know, hunting down the trees that were big enough to make those pieces of lumber out of, dragging them up here and milling them. So that's what I've been doing. And um, I'm always worried there's something on my face in one video there is, it's funny. Uh, and it looks like a like, big old piece of bread, but anyway, off topic. Uh, so what I've done, and you've seen this before, is I've milled the lumber, put it over here. It's not cut to length yet. Uh, but it is, you know, to basically the dimensions, the two by eight, a true two by eight. And I did that part a while ago. I wanted to get it started because I had some lumber milled. And I didn't want it to sit around for, you know, four or five months and get all warped up and stuff. So I put, I put that on there just to kind of trial run to see. And that worked great. Then you see, you know, you're, the video of me and my mom leveling that middle sill plate there getting it all level and bent back to play in place and and uh, so what i've got this trailer here and got that trailer over there i don't know if you can see it let me see if i can zoom in here trailer over there yeah there it is next to the mill i'm going to uh, go get the pickup drag that trailer over here and basically set it right here next to this one and uh what i'm going to do is take the board I move this this table over here. I had the saw over here, but uh, move this table, big table over here. I'm gonna take the boards off this trailer. They're, they're heavy. Position them over here. Put them on this saw. Square off the end. Push it through to the desired length. And right now, I think the the length is gonna be something like 11 feet 8 inches across there. Uh, because counting the sill plate, which are not sill plate, with the vertical board I'll put on top of the sill plate, takes some distance away. Because uh, it's 24 feet from the outside of the block to the outside of the block. And then obviously I put a 2 by on that side. I have a 2 by on this side, so that takes away 4 inches. A good 4 inches. And anyway, so that's the plan for today. So uh, I'm going to push uh, pause on this. I'm gonna pull the pickup over here and, and hook that thing up, which you've seen me do before. I'm gonna drag that trailer. Probably just put it, I might put it right here. That way I've got, you know, it's just kind of out of the way. I'll still be able to get my backhoe and lift the boards up, which you'll see later to take over there. Um, Cause if I put it over there, that's still a longer distance to drag those boards off the trailer and it takes away, you know, some area to drive around. Okay. So that is the process. I'm getting ready to uh, drive up, get the pickup uh, to hook onto that trailer, drag that trailer over here. And like I said, I think I'm gonna put it right here. Just gonna make it a little easier to take the boards off the trailer, put it to the saw to get all that up. Okay, uh, more video to come. Taking a pause right now. Got the trailer here. Moved it from there to here. Uh, put a pop up of that. Ordered a canopy top for that because the blue one broke, got all ripped up. That one's too big, but it's going to work. No big deal. So I got shade with the trees right now. But later on today, if I want to keep working, there's no, no shade because that sun will be straight up. So I'll be able to get under there. I may move that around. I'll just put it up over there because it was easy to get out. All right, I'm getting ready to untarp this uh, saw. Start cutting some lengths like I was talking about earlier. Sorry about the camera jiggling around. I'm uh, opening up the tripod, or lengthening the tripod, I guess is what I should say. But anyway, uh, not sure exactly. I think I'm gonna start cutting those off right there. None of those will be 12 feet because it's got some rotten stuff and kind of crooked. So, but I'm gonna cut them into the lengths that I can use and that'll just go around the boundary the vertical boards and then I've got a 
Like I said, that's about a nine footer that I need right there. I'd like to get a full nine footer over there. I think I got one or two down the bottom of this thing. I just gotta move some of the boards around to find it. And uh, all right, so right now I'm gonna take that off, that tarp. Big old wasp nest under here yesterday. Yeah, I need to go get the spray. Oh, I'm gonna put this on pause, go get the spray. And there may be one up underneath there. I thought it was just on the tarp, but I'm gonna go get the spray and have it out here. All right. Well, this is black flag. It's not wasp spray. Wasp spray really squirts out there. So this just, this works. Struggling in there, there's a couple. Yeah. Alright, I think I got them good enough. All right, gonna push pause and we'll go over and get the extent, run the extension cord out, hook it up, get this saw kind of in running order. All right, be right back. I decided I'm gonna show you what I, how this works. It's just a water hose thing. Should roll out. And getting set up sometimes takes longer than the actual work. But you know, when you live out here where the in the elements, you gotta put everything up or else it gets ruined. So okay, Let's see what I did there. Ran the extension cord over to the well house, which I have power to the well house. Hook the extension cord up, I'll hook this saw up. Uh, get everything leveled, show you that. Make my first cut. I'm gonna drag a board over here, make my first cut, start putting stacking them on that thing right there. Then I'll be able to lift them up with the backhoe, take them over there. So I'm going to make a cut, set a, set one or two on there, and then I've got to stir the paint up and start painting these ends before I cover them up accidentally. And by covering them up, I mean put some boards end to end where I can't get paint on there anymore. It'll help seal them, keep them from cracking, that type of thing. 
Okay, uh, gonna get some time to get this thing set up. Uh, be right back. Well, I cut the uh, 90 degree. I stuck it in from that direction. Cut the 90 degree, and of course the wind's kind of blowing that way, so the sawdust will straight back in my face. But no big deal. Again, this, these pieces right here are just going to be whatever lengths I can make them because it's got some bad areas in the board, like right here, really bad. You see that right there? So cutting it off, I'm going to cut that section off. Right here's a little bit of rot. So I'll probably cut this section right in here. So I have a, you know, whatever. That could be a scab or something that I use later. So I'm trying not to waste any wood. That right there turned into some firewood. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this down, make this cut here show you that process and uh, see what happens. Process. that's what I'm going to be doing today like I said and then when I start painting these ends I'll show you a little bit of that too uh, my first goal is to kind of unload these trailers get them the wood find me about a 10 footer so I can cut that over there and then I can get me some more sections to put through here so I can start these floor joists putting them on there uh, dad's gonna come up later and work the nail gun a little bit make sure it's in working order haven't used it in a couple months so that's the plan all right if I have anything new, I'll make sure and try to get that on video also. Okay, it's gonna get hot today. Today's gonna be the coolest day of the week and it's gonna be 98, so hundreds all week, which means the feel like temperature's gonna be 105, 110. So just gotta take it slow to go, you know, do some work, get it done when I can and stay cool, hydrated. Again, retired, so no big hurry. The pressure, the hurry is what I put on myself to get this house done. But I've got a place to live, everything's good. All right, here we go. So, started some painting. By painting, I'll show you what I'm talking about. After I cut them, it's good to paint the ends. Still there. It helps, it helps prevent the splitting part on a, a cut piece of wood. So like I said, I'll, I'll start, you know, maybe painting these ends because they're nice and square, some of them. Obviously, I won't paint that one because I'll have to cut that and make it whatever length it's gonna be. Uh, let me show you what I'm doing over here. When I put the uh, two buys joist across here, I didn't paint these ends. Got in a hurry, got all excited. See, there's two that are painted. I must have did those when they were on the trailer or whatever. Uh, got excited, obviously, and started just putting them on there. But now I'm gonna go back and paint them. To help them then throw some cracking and then the ends of these one buys some of them are painted some aren't so i'm gonna go back and paint the ends just to prevent again it helps prevent the cracking so that's what i'm doing right now got my paint right there it's just some old paint that we found at a five and dime store doesn't really matter what color or anything so anyway that's the progress now dad's over working on the, the air gun make sure it's going to be nice and ready to go for me when I start, you know, nailing the wood onto the structure. So, progress, everything's going to plan so far. We know how that works out. I say that and I'll probably get over there and something bad will happen or something will break, but hopefully not. That's just the way it is out here. Okay, signing off for now. Okay, uh, getting hot, it's almost noon. Got a lot of stuff done. A lot of stuff done. Hopefully I don't have any sawdust on my face, but that's part of work. Cut this one. This one right here is going to go vertical here. And I'll, I'll nail that into place. And then I made sure that it crosses over this junction right here. So it's going to go full length. I want to cross over 
that way it ties it down as many times as you can cross over joints with another piece of wood it just makes it stronger so see what i did right there make sure it went over that same thing down at that end the board crosses over this junction with the seal plate just going to make it stronger um, so that one will go to the end and then what i've been doing is finding boards that aren't 12 feet long that i'm cutting into sections some of them will be 10 foot some will be long a little longer some will be a little shorter to put the vertical wall up here and then i'll start cutting the 12 foot i'm calling them 12 foot they're really going to be like 11 8 floor joists that'll go across here like so join up next to those and um, get those things going across here nailing into the vertical wall that I'm putting up getting them going getting them across here go as far as I can I may have enough to get right in this area right in here I'm not sure be close so anyway time to take a break got these boards right here cut up and paint the ends painted so be able to put those things uh, on the I'm going to get the backhoe and lift them up with the backhoe, drive them around, set them over there so I don't have to carry each one of these individually. So I'll set them over there. That way I don't have to pick them up to put them into place that one time. So that's my goal anyway. As you can tell, I got a couple different lengths. You know, anywhere from 10 something to 5 something that'll go over there that I'll nail into place. So that'll be the vertical wall. Then they'll get connected with the... Uh, joists and then the joists will be locked into place with the floorboards all that good stuff another thing i was thinking that i may do for this this house this log cabin is obviously you got your floor there and then the next thing that happens is i'll put some type of barrier around the edge around the edge right here on top of the floor then I'll set my logs so let's say that this is the log it's not it'll be my logs are going to be six I think by six by six so let's say the log is sitting like so six inches wide and then I was just going to do the typical toggle bolt nails whatever they're called the screws long screws and go into the subfloor into this in some areas but then i was thinking you know what i could and probably will do if you look got the bolt here that's going into concrete remember my set my my stem wall is concreted down into rebar and all that so that's all connected i thought you know what i'm going to do throughout this floor i don't know how many per side but i'm going to get and i'm not even sure what it's called but it's a long nut thread it all the way through and i'll nut that on there tight onto that and then i will drill a hole so what will happen drill a hole through the log all the way down through the floor to there and i'll come up to that first log say that's right here and I'm not sure what it's called, but drill out a spacer hole so I can put a nut down on top of that uh, all thread bolt, all thread that I'll get that I'll bolt down into that other uh, nut thing that I just put on there. I'm not sure what it's called. I'll figure out the name. And then bolt it down so that first log will like just pull everything tight down all the way to the stinking rebar so it'll be solid. You know, if I put three or four on this side and four or six on that side, you know, that's, man, talk about solid. Talk about solid that way, huh? So I'm thinking about doing that, probably will. And then, you know, then that's tight. And then obviously I'm going to have wood dowels and other, those screws that go through that hold all the logs together. So anyway, that's down the road, not too far down the road, but down the road, uh, Gotta get this floor built first, huh? And then the plumbing. So, all right. Uh, that's probably, eh, wait, we don't know. Maybe it for the day. I'm not sure. Getting stuff done, though. Excited. Okay. Good work.
Good work. Dad was working on that. We had a problem with the air compressor. Didn't bring that up. So I got to actually go to town, and get some uh, air connections. One of the little hoses on the regulator for the air compressor broke. So can't use it. Don't need it yet, but that's why we did this ahead of time to troubleshoot a little bit. So may go in tonight. I know I got to go tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Later on. A new day. Uh, it got really hot yesterday, but yesterday evening I came out and I moved the boards that I cut yesterday. They were not, I, I painted the ends. You saw that. They were over there on the uh, metal stand table thing that I have. That's what the, the, believe it or not, the Harbor Freight sawmill came in that pretty much. So it's kind of amazing they put that thing in there, but they did. Anyway, uh, got the backhoe, lifted up these two by eights, brought them over here and sat them right here. I was going to set them down on the ground. And even though I've um, sprayed, treated the area for termites, I just didn't want to put that down on the ground. I don't know how fast termites work, even if there's any in the area anymore. So I just did not want to set it down on the ground. I'm keep trying to keep every piece of wood that I put on the house off the ground after I mill it. Obviously, you know, the logs are sitting on the ground. So when I cut it, I can see what kind of material I'm getting. And from that point on, I try not to let it touch the ground. Just as a safety precaution, I don't know. Heck, it may take a week for termites, you know, to find the wood to get in there and all that stuff. But I just didn't want to chance it on my house. So since it's going to be all wood, uh, pretty much, you know, there's going to be some things in there, obviously. Uh, the tent, the metal roof and all that good stuff. But anyway, so I'm going to start putting up these um, vertical uh, part of the floor joist, the flooring. So I've got this one, you know, obviously I'm going to butt this one up, up against it. Start putting them on. Our nail gun still isn't working, so I'm gonna pre-drill some pilot holes, maybe screw in, just to could just to get them all up there around the vertical part because I've gone top of all the trailers. I've got the 12 footers sitting on top of some of these. So I need to start cutting 12 footers. So but I can't until I get this vertical one right here. So then I can measure from you know that point to this point so that's what I'm doing you know it, it's not going to be all secure and all everything with the 16 penny nails in the air gun yet until I get that thing fixed I'm going to go into town today and get the parts for that so tomorrow morning or tomorrow maybe uh, I should be able to use the air gun okay uh, let me show you what I'm going to do right here and then I'm just going to set it up there show you and then I've got to pause to get some nails and all that good stuff my screw guns so what's happening is this is the one I cut the other day painted so it goes I should have my gloves but again I gotta go get all that stuff here in a second it goes on the outside edge like so just like so Just like that. Perfect. Perfect. That's exactly what I want right there, guys. Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna push pause and then go get some uh, tools. All right, got these uh, boards kind of toenailed in. Not, not like I said, not as strong as it's gonna be when I go back and really secure it with the the nail gun. Maybe even put some screws. And then like I've shown you before, there's a bracket right over there. I'm going to put some L brackets around this edge also to kind of just, I'm going to make this thing strong. So I'm not going to have any problems. Now I've got this board over here. And when you cut it on the sawmill, sometimes when you hit a little knot or hard part in the wood, it, it kind of bows a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm looking to find the smoothest straightest edge to put down so that'll be this side here we'll go down so that's what i'm getting ready to do is put that one down 
Um, and make sure you know all the sawdust and stuff is, is off so it's got a nice smooth uh, edge. I think I'm going to put this one inside, this side inside. This looks a little better, not that it matters, because eventually it'll have some paint on it and stuff on it anyway. Like I said, there's gonna be some little imperfections, but it's gonna be, it's fine. Everything looks good, okay. Perfect, all right. And remember, when, when you start putting those logs and you start building a house, you got the subfloor, you start setting that house on top of everything, it just kind of locks everything in, secures it all down. So that's the, the point also of uh, building a wood house. It's gonna move for years and years and years. Okay, taking a push and pause, gonna start working on this area. Okie doke. Not perfect yet. It's gonna be close to perfect when I get done. But not perfect yet just because when you mill your own wood there's some deformities and that's just the way it is so put the rough lumber on i got the vertical part on the north side of the and you can see there's a couple places like right here i'll have to plane that down a little bit uh, this is a little bit over eight inches you know and this is just a little below but i'm you know plane that down it's all going to be good um Got that vertical board up there, just uh, past the midway point of the house on that end. Because remember, I want to get this side done here. So now I'm going to start cutting the uh, the joist. So I got to measure my 16 inch centers. Because that's what I'm going for here, 16 inch. Could go longer with this big of wood, but I, I don't want to. I want it to be solid. Um, which it's going to be lordy, it's going to be. So anyway, got that. Looking good. This is exciting stuff when I'm doing stuff to the house. This is the wood I milled off my property. And it's going on my house, off the sawmill and the trees out here. Uh, by no means am I depleting. <laughs> this is, you know, I haven't even very rarely cut anything around where my house is gonna be, but it's still thick. I mean, I've got, you know, 40 acres or so to cut off. So anyway, uh, I'm going to start measuring my 16 inch center here, marking that, then I'll measure the distances because there will be a little bit of differences, you know, as far as lengths, not much. Uh, so I'm going to make sure each one is cut. To... All right. Been out here a while. It's getting hot, so I've got to call it a day, but I'll show you what happened. What I'm getting ready to do before I walk over next to the backhoe because it's running. I'm going to lift those four 12 foot long. They're actually 142 inches long. Just a, a hair under 142 inches long. Those are the floor joists. And I'm going to pick them up with the backhoe. I'm going to go around that side of the house. I'm going to set them down right over there where they're going to, where they belong. That way I don't have to carry them and go back and forth over this wall. I'll be able to set them down in there position them where I want them, <laughs> unhook them without carrying them, each one of them this distance. Cause this is untreated, undried, heavy oak. These are blackjack oaks, so they're heavy. So I'm gonna pick them up, bring them over here, set them down. I'm gonna position the camera over there so hopefully we can see everything happening. Uh, so you can see the process that I've, I've done. So I'm gonna take this over there. You probably won't be able to hear me very much, but that's okay. I get long-winded sometimes. So I'm having some success today, liking it. Only had one time where I measured twice, cut it, and I was wrong both times. Thank, thankfully, I measured 
too long, so I was able to just cut off what I messed up. So it still happens, and that's what happens when you start getting tired too. So okay, I'm gonna set the camera up, uh, position so that hopefully we can see the whole process that's getting ready to happen right here. I'm gonna hook those orange straps onto the bucket. You'll see me lift it up and move it and then drive it around. So I'm gonna be done talking. I'm gonna try to set this camera up right here so we can see everything. that okay I'm gonna give it a try
you're still watching. I just uh, keep filming that stuff. Let me get this camera off here if I don't phone break my neck. <laughs> I have fun. I'll try to have fun. Look at that. Worked out just like I wanted. Set them down in there. Didn't have to carry them. Uh, I'm going to turn them on their ends just to set them there. I mean, and I don't, I don't need to do that right now. I'm done. It's hot. I'm done. I'm going to come out and work again tomorrow. Maybe this evening. Probably not this evening, but definitely tomorrow morning. Get these things positioned in there. There's four. And then I'll get all the ones off the trailer. Start putting them down through there. What's kind of neat is, you know, it's as simple as it sounds, picking those boards up with that backhoe, coming around here and setting them in there. And, uh, you know, it's like I get excited because it worked. I was like, yeah, okay. The thing that I wanted to do, it happened this time. So, anyway, not a big victory, but a victory. Success. Okay, I'm done for this day. I'm going to keep, uh, obviously, shooting some video of this stuff happening and and showing the progress as we go. So, big progress today. Okay, thanks for watching. Keep going. Hi, today is August 8th. It's a Thursday. Great morning. Supposed to be near 100, but they're saying, well, if the clouds come in, it might keep it down. So, right now, clouds are in. It's only nine o'clock, still early, but still, things are good. It's good right now. Good work's happening. I got these six two by eights cut up, painted the ends, got the four that I cut yesterday, yesterday or the day before, can't remember. Uh, setting over here, I'm getting ready to use the back home, bring those six over here. So what's happening, just so I'll give you a visual here, I've, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I measured all those nine. I've got 10 cut, so that means I'm now starting right here. So what I did was I had to measure over from that one to this mark here, the 16th center, and I wrote the distance down right there, 142 inches, then I cut these specific. So what I'm gonna do now is just go 142 all the way across. That'll put it right in the middle. It's gonna put it right on the edge of this, this uh, vertical board here. And then when I get to that side is when I'll have to start measuring specific again. Should be, you know, all of these were from 142 to 141 and three quarters. So, I mean, what, it, it varied a quarter of an inch, you know, depending on probably some mistakes on these boards, cut a little bit longer or shorter, maybe the little bit of different width of the vertical boards on this side. So maybe they're a little bit thicker or thinner. So that in turn changes the distance on this side a little bit. But it doesn't matter because it's still square. Once I get all these floor joists on, all the floorboards for the subfloor, get all those on, it's a rectangle. Perfect rectangle. So that's the point and the main thing. Oh, the structural under here is solid. I mean, these are not, these are two inches by eight inches boards um you know some are a little bit different i'll probably have to shimmy under some probably cut off a little bit because that sawmill when i was cutting them you know it varies a little bit but that's why they call it rough boards you know i have a planer so when i started getting into the cosmetic part the parts that are going to show uh, i'll be able to plane those off and if i want to sand it i can but to be able to plane them get them exact so that there's a, that smooth look um, right in here doesn't matter if the boards differ a little bit so uh because it's solid oh lordy <laughs> okay um just wanted to show you the progress right there so what i'm going to do is continue cutting some uh 142 inch floor joists try to get this whole side done try to get these trailers emptied get all the usable long floor joist boards off the trailer onto the house move my trailers back over there then i'll have to start milling again i'm sure to get me some some more um floor joists 12 foot long the 12 foot thing is the challenge to get the 12 footers because sometimes you run into the 
discrepancies in the trees and the boards and all that. So, okay, I'm gonna keep after it while it's cool.